Okay, so I'm going to be making another video here about how, GitHub and how to use Git from the command line. So before I get started, though, there are two commands I would like to point out, just in case you're unfamiliar with them or haven't used the Linux command line before. Um, the first one is ls, which gives a directory listing. So in other words, it lists the files in the folder you're currently in. On Windows, it's different. It's dir on some systems. I think if you use PowerShell, it's ls also, but just be aware of that. Um, so you can see I'm in my home directory right now, which is what this little tilde here means, and there's a listing of all my uh, files. The other command I wanted to talk about was change directory command, or cd. So if you cd and then the name of another directory, and my directories are listed in blue, so here's the workspace directory, you enter that directory. So now I'm no longer in my home directory, I am now in the directory called workspace, and you can see that if I list the contents of the directory, it's changed to reflect what's inside workspace. So um, that's pretty much all you need to know for this. Um, so anyway, GitHub. Uh, if you open GitHub on the main page, once you log in, you'll get this sort of um, updates page or this home page which kind of shows you some updates about what's going on in repositories that you're currently subscribed to as well as some information on your repositories. Uh, you can also go to this little dashboard page here which shows you some information about your recent activity as well as a list of your repositories and stuff. Um, I'll click on a repository here so you can see what kind of goes on. So here when you when you go to a repository page in GitHub you get a listing of the most recent um, version of the master branch by default. And in this case, there is a list of all the files currently in the repository. You can look at the sources for the files. They give you a nice formatting. So if I click on this, you can see they give you some nicely formatted code with like color coding and everything. So you can kind of look through what's going on there. The nice thing about this, though, is that you can look at changes and stuff that have been made in the past. So if I wanted to see what had happened since I was last here, I could click on history and view some of the history for the file. So if I take a look at this commit here, which was about seven days ago, um, I can see some of the changes that happened. So apparently I replaced this line with this line and uh, deleted this line, uh, inserted some stuff around here that it looks like. So it does all this like nice highlighting for you and uh, gives you some little plus symbols and minus symbols to show what you added and removed. Now it's probably important to note that, say with like this line, even though I just changed the line, it actually views, it as, views that as me having removed this line and added this line, even though all I did was add comma time to the end. So that's probably worth noting, although it probably won't cause you any significant problems. So anyway, what if I wanted to work on a repository. For this class, you'll probably be checking out a blank repository for the first time, so I have created a demo repository to show you how to work this. So from a Git repository page, there's only one thing you need to figure out to actually get the repository, and that's the URL for the repository. They actually give you several. So the first one here, you can just use this URL to actually check out the repository. They also provide you with some secondary URLs down here, which also work. So if you wanted to use SSH instead to check out your repository, you can do that. You have to add a key to your account, though. So you would have to do that before that'll work. HTTPS, you just need your username and password for GitHub. So in this case, since most of you probably haven't added an SSH key to GitHub, I'll demonstrate using the uh, secure HTTP. So anyway, you can just copy that URL and go to a terminal like this one. And you can use the git clone command to make a local copy of the repository on your hard drive. So that works like this. git clone and then you can paste in your repository URL, press enter, and it should create a local copy on your hard drive. So 
cloning into demo. That should be where it's at. If I list my directory, I can see there's now a file called demo or a directory called demo, which I can CD into and it contains the contents, the same contents as my repository over here, which is just a readme file that was automatically generated by GitHub when I created the repository. So, now that I have my own copy of this repository, having cloned it, I will probably want to start making some changes. So let's say I wanted to edit this readme file. I'll use Emacs here. You can use any editor to do this. So maybe I want to just add some exclamation points here and give some useless information about this project. And I'll save that and close it. Now, I can use, now that I've edited something, I can go ahead and see what changes I've made since the last commit or since I last cloned the repository by using the git status command. That'll give me some useful information about what's changed in the repository. So you can see it says changes not staged for commit and then it lists down here modified readme.md. So it knows which file I've modified. Now at this point I probably want to commit that to the repository or log that change in the repository's version control history. So in order to do that, it's a little bit different than subversion. I can't just git commit, and I'll show you why. If I do git commit dash m and I add a message, it'll fail. It says, no changes added to commit. This is because Git uses a staging area to allow you to tell it which files, or specifically which changes, you want to actually apply in this commit. The reason for this is, if you've made modified several files, you might want to split it up into several commits for neatness and making your repository easier to understand, because your changes may not be related to each other. In this case, I've only made one change, so it's somewhat irrelevant. But you can go ahead and add something to the staging area by using the git add command. So, for example, git add readme.md. Okay, so now that I press enter, the fact that it didn't put any output is actually a good sign. That means it succeeded. Now if I use git status again, I can see that changes to be committed lists readme.md which is what I want because I want to commit that change. So now I can go ahead and commit it. I'll go ahead and use my previous commit message here. Great. Okay, so it succeeded. It tells me one file changed, three insertions, one deletion. This here is the name of the branch that I've committed to. By default, a Git repository has one branch called master. If you're not going to use branching in your project, you probably don't have to worry about that too much. This here is a portion of the commit signature, which you don't really need to know much about other than that every commit that you make has a special identifier that's a pretty long hash code like this. You can actually list all the commits and changes that you've made in the recent past by using the git log command. So for example, if I wanted to see all the changes I've made, git log, and here, there have been two commits to this repository. This one, identified by this rather long hash string, which was my most recent commit where I changed that readme.md file, and the initial commit to the repository, which was actually done by GitHub creating the repository. So there. Is that? Okay, so all that's pretty simple. But there's one more thing I should cover, namely, what if I want to add a new file instead of modifying an existing one? Well, that's actually not that complicated. So right now, our directory only contains readme.md, but I'm going to add a new file. OK, so I've created a C file. And I'm just going to add that one little header there and close it. So now if I relist the directory contents, there's our test.c. 
and I'll go ahead and try and commit this file. If I get status to see what's going on, I can see there is one file that's listed as untracked, namely my test.c, which means git is for the most part ignoring it right now. If I want to add it to version control, git already tells me what to do. It says use git add to track. Now in this case, you might be thinking, well wait a second, git add was for adding something to the staging area. Well in this case, git is smart enough to figure out what you mean, and it's also pretty much the same thing. By adding it to version control, you're also adding that to the staging area. Because it's one change. You're just adding a file. So I go ahead and add the file, and now try git status again, and there we go, changes to be committed one new file, test.c. Now I can go ahead and commit. There. That was a successful commit. One file changed, one insertion. Now if I git log again, I can see the results of that in full. There's my commit log message. So, there is something here that we probably want to do and that's to move all this to github. If I go back to github and refresh you can see that nothing has changed. Readme is exactly the same and I'll show you the raw there's the raw file. Nothing has changed. None of my commits have showed up on github. The reason is because I still have to push my changes to the github server. Now when you cloned the repository git automatically figured out all the address information for the git repository. So you don't have to add that. But you can take a look at it if you're curious by using git remote. And it actually lists origin and you can get a closer look at it by using git remote dash v which will tell you the information that it picked up automatically. So it has the information for where it will push those changes. So if I want to push I probably should first pull because that's good practice just in case somebody has made some changes to the repository while I was working. In fact, if somebody had made changes and the master branch on the repository was ahead by several commits of my branch here, of my master branch, Git would actually fail to push the changes and would tell me you have to pull first. Now if none of that had been done, it will actually go ahead and just push it anyway, but it's a good thing to do. So I'll go ahead and git pull. It should tell me I'm already up to date because nobody else is committing to this repository or pushing to this repository. So I can go ahead and push my changes. Git push. It's going to ask me for my username and password. So I can go ahead and log in there. Oh, great. Do I remember my password? No. Guess I don't remember my password. Let me try that again. type today. Okay, that worked. So, you can see it actually transferred all that data to the GitHub server and gave me some information about what happened, told me this all happened on branch master, and some information about the uh, commit IDs that were pushed to the server. So, now, if I go back to GitHub and refresh what's going on, it should reflect the changes I've made. So here we go. Here's our new one with our exclamation marks and useless project information, as well as our test.c with our um, little useless include line there. So that's about it for pushing and pulling to git and using git. Uh, it's all very simple. I hope this has been helpful, and uh, if you have any questions, go ahead and post them on Slack or ask your friends.